Hello and welcome to the Gamer Hobbit. To celebrate 1000 subs, we're going to cover the well-known Lord of the Rings mod by Mevins. Based off the fantasy realm of Middle-earth, the Lord of the Rings mod adds in the entirety of Middle-earth to Minecraft, incorporating dozens of new blocks, items, mobs, structures, biomes, and more. Not only that, but it also adds in several new mechanics to make the experience in Middle-earth even more entertaining, including an allegiance system with various factions, quests, fast travel, and also the ability to hire your very own army to fight for you. Getting to Middle-earth can be done in two ways. Either set the world tucked to Middle Earth to jump straight in, or if you want to go in through the overworld, craft a golden ring and cast it into the fire, for it is only then that a giant portal will allow you passage into Middle Earth. When you arrive in Middle Earth, you will spawn somewhere within the Shire. Here, you can either gather the necessities like wood, stone, and food, or explore and interact with hobbits and their comfy holes. Shortly after you spawn in, you may encounter a Grey Wanderer, or commonly known as Gandalf the Grey. Interacting with the Grey Wanderer will introduce you to the core aspects the mod offers, including quests, the map of Middle-earth, the various factions and your alignment with them, and will also provide you with some pouches and a red book, which tracks all of your active and completed quests. After that, you are free to roam Middle-earth as you see fit. If you decide that you want to travel back to the overworld, either go back through the ring portal that you made, or create an elven or morgul portal, using the respective materials of either Edhelmer, water and flowers for elven, or Goldoril crystals, bricks, lava, and bone for Morgul. The map of Middle-earth is divided into regions, most of which contain various biomes, structures, blocks, and mobs. Although much of the terrain is randomly generated, like in vanilla, there are a few mountains and hills which always generate regardless. Most regions also contain waypoints, markers which give you some background information about the surrounding area. Almost every region has a waypoint, with some scattered throughout a region whilst others are clustered together. When entering a new region, you will gain the ability to fast travel to those waypoints. To fast travel, simply have the waypoint unlocked and press F. After you fast travel to a destination, you will have a 30 minute real time cooldown. This alongside the requirement of discovering a region prevents you from just fast travelling down to Far Harrowed as soon as you start, but also doesn't hesitate in letting you go beyond the Shire straight away, making a nice balance between exploring and fast travelling. Throughout your travels with this mod, you will encounter various types of factions that are spread throughout the land, from the dwarves of the Blue Mountains to legions of orcs within Dol Guldur. By default, your alignment with every faction is neutral. Few factions however, including the Woodland Elves and the Orcs of Mordor, require a higher level of alignment before they can trust you. With these factions, you can either form alliances or mortal enemies as you please. Increasing your alignment with a faction can be done by either completing quests or by killing said faction's enemies within their area of influence, their area of influence being where their faction is present. The deeper you are in a faction's region, the more alignment you earn. Doing this will not only increase your standing with a particular faction, but you will slowly increase your standing with nearby factions and become enemies of others. Killing Gundabad wargs, for instance, will increase your standing with the Dunedain and Durin's folk, but will decrease your standing with Gundabad and Agmar. Some factions also have unique ways of increasing or lowering your alignment with them. Killing horses of Rohan, for example, will lower your standing with Rohan, and will cause any Rohirrim soldiers to attack you. By increasing your standing with a faction, you can work your way through the ranks and begin to acquire more perks. Most factions have the same benefits of increasing your alignment, including the ability to trade with them, gain access to their crafting tables, which enables you to craft their faction-specific weapons, armor, and blocks, be treated more of a friend by your faction, and more. Factions which have mounts can also be tamed after reaching a certain alignment. Increasing your alignment with the Orcs of Dol Guldur will allow you to tame your very own Mirkwood Spider, which is an awesome way to traverse the realm of Middle Earth. You can also have the option to pledge to a faction, which not only lets you attain higher ranks, but also lets you acquire elite units, have discounts for hiring troops, and you can also conquer land for your faction, making your presence in Middle Earth even more impactful. However, you can only pledge to one faction at a time, so make sure you make the right choice, otherwise you will suffer heavy penalties for breaking the pledge. Additionally, by increasing your alignment, you are able to hire your own army to fight for you. Once you reach a certain alignment, find a captain and interact with it. Here, you can see the price to hire a unit in silver coins, the required alignment level to hire a unit, and whether you need to pledge to your faction or not. Once you met the requirements, you can begin to hire your army. Each faction has its own type of units to hire. These units can range from standard soldiers and archers to banner bearers. 
various creatures like Dwarven Boars and Mordor Spiders, elite units including Uruk Berserkers, and even some special units such as Hill Trolls from Angmar. There are three ways to control your higher units. Right clicking them will let you change their gear or guard a certain area. For controlling groups of units, Crafting a Horn will let you either halt, ready or summon your hired troops and the Sword of Command will let you command your troops to attack your foes manually. Having the ability to command your troops can assist you in many ways, whether it is protecting your base from incoming ambushes or helping you raid your enemy's territory. Alongside these cool features, the mod also adds in plenty of extra content, including a new dimension, Utumo, which can be accessed by venturing into the cold reaches of Forodwaith. Within this wretched place, everything wants to kill you, ranging from orcs, elves, trolls and wargs, to deadly ice spiders and the demonic balrogs of the ancient world. Come prepared however, as this giant mausoleum is not for the simple adventurer, and although there are many rewards that can be retrieved, the journey to and within Utumo is perilous. Depending on who you fight for and against, the Malon Ant and the Hill Troll Chieftain are two new bosses that can be summoned and fought by the player, both of which have various boss mechanics which the player can take advantage of. Killing these bosses will not only significantly affect your alignment with the surrounding factions, but will also reward you with a plethora of loot. A whole assortment of achievements have been added, which will reward you with shields and more custom waypoints once you hit the required amounts. Invasions, where platoons of various factions appear in your area, then you either run or fight them for various rewards. Some occasions, there may be more than one invading faction, which can make your world feel even more immersive. There is also plenty of other features, but I will let you discover them for yourself. If you are unsure about how a certain mechanic works, or want to know more about the world of Middle-earth, then the wiki will be able to assist you. Overall, Lord of the Rings is an amazing mod to play through, adding in dozens of options for the player, whether it's delving into a dungeon to find some treasure, or watching your enemies flee as you're forced to invade an enemy faction. Not only does this mod provide many places to explore, but it also offers several new building options for you to take advantage of. If you ever wanted a new dimension to visit, or desired to be in the land of Middle Earth, then grab this mod. Currently, the mod is slightly being ported over to 1.15, which is known as Lord of the Rings Renewed, which aims to bring content gradually into 1.15, which will be released in a similar fashion to vanilla snapshots. So if you want to check out for various updates, then check out this video playlist by GLF Legolas, which covers the key features within each snapshot. Thanks to Mevins and the development team for making this fantastic and huge mod, and link to download it is in the description below. And that is all for today. Thank you all for helping the channel reach this milestone. Whether it's suggesting new mods for me to cover, showing support on my videos, or simply just watching them. Your support, comments, and feedback helps me continue to make more quality of content. It may not be as large as other milestones, but it is a good step in the right direction. Oh, and in case if you're wondering, Return of the King is my favourite Lord of the Rings movie. Once again, thank you all for watching, and have a good day.